Hey nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I am out in the woods and I uh, want to talk with you about Amanita jacksonii and other Amanita mushrooms in Amanita section Caesarea. So uh, the common name for this mushroom would be uh, the slender Caesars mushroom, but it's a lot more complicated than that. So I'm gonna talk about identifying Amanita jacksonii and its relatives in the uh, Amanita uh, section Caesarea. And then additionally, I'm gonna talk about telling the difference between Amanita jacksonii in the strict sense and then those relatives uh, and uh, their features and how to distinguish them. They are all edible and considered choice. Uh, that said, Amanita is a genus that's definitely not for, for beginners. Uh, you know, these mushrooms are really recognizable, but you have some very, very toxic species in the Amanita genus. And so, you know, it's one of those where uh, I just encourage people to be cautious, especially if they're brand new to mushroom hunting. Unfortunately, this specimen you can see has taken a good bit of a beating, uh, but I am going to uh, show you the features because they're all present, fortunately. So uh, first of all, you have a cap and stem mushroom. So I'm going to talk about um, Amanita jacksonii in the strict sense, which is what this mushroom is. And then I'll talk about its relatives and all that fun stuff. So uh, to go back to the beginning, Amanita jacksonii, cap and stem mushroom, you have, uh, you know, sometimes they're much larger than this. So they're handsome and of a reasonable size. They're also, uh, you know, this orangey uh, vermilion color. When they're babies, they tend to be a much brighter yellow and they come up in a little egg that protects the baby mushroom. And when that mushroom matures, you get a big vulva or a big cup of tissue at the base. So this is a really distinguishing feature for Amanita jacksonii and its relatives in the Caesarea section. Uh, so you do have some other brightly colored sort of, uh, you know, orangey, yellow, red Amanitas, but none of them have this uh, distinctive cup at the base. So uh, that's what you have going on as far as, uh, you know, the base of the stem and cap color. You have also with these mushrooms, very distinctive striations. So these are stripy grooves and they don't go all the way to the center of the cap, but they go pretty far in. So you see striations on a, on a lot of mushrooms, but sometimes it's fainter. Sometimes it just doesn't go as far in uh, on the, you know, to the center of the cap. But in the case, of Amanita jacksonii and all those other Caesarea section mushrooms, you have striations. As far as the stem, and this is where we get into the distinguishing features between jacksonii, strict sense, and its relatives. So all of these mushrooms do have, um, you know, gills that are sort of whitish to begin with, but mostly this uh, yellowy color. That's a really good feature to distinguish the whole section from other Amanitas. So most Amanitas do have white gills, including very poisonous ones, which also have cups at the base. So that's section Phylloideae. So death cap mushrooms, destroying angel mushrooms, all kinds of menacing common names. They have white gills. They do have a cup at the base, but you have this distinguishing thing going on. So Caesarea, yellowish gills, uh, oftentimes to, you know, this really pretty striking lemon yellow. And then you have a really nice uh, ring on the stem. This one, again, it's taken a lot of damage, but it is uh, sort of an orangey color. It tends to be a little orangier than the stem itself. So you have, uh, you know, an orange uh, ring and that's that's a protective layer of tissue that breaks and leaves, uh, you know, this um, this feature here. And uh, it comes off relatively easily, uh, but there is a good bit of tissue. So some rings are very uh, ephemeral and there's not much going on. But even though this one's kind of, uh, you know, old, broken and messed up, you can see there's a good bit of that tissue. So matching that tissue toward the bottom of the uh, stem, in the case of Amanita jacksonii, you have sort of a uh, stretch mark, streaky looking red covering or, uh, you know, red texturization on top of the stem. And the stem is, a ye uh, is yellow in color. So in the case of, um, you know, Amanita jacksonii in the strict sense, this streaking reddish color is a, is a really defining thing. So other mushrooms in this section, uh, you know, have varying features. Um, and, you know, there are some of them that look nearly identical to this one. 
So I want to talk about AR01. Uh, so it looks almost exactly like Amanita Jacksonii. Uh, AR stands for Arkansas, not assault rifle. So it is uh, the 01 species in the Amanita section Caesarea that was found in Arkansas, I believe is uh, what all of that is referencing. So, uh, but it doesn't have this uh, red streakiness on the stem, the stretch marks of, of red. And then additionally, um, from what I understand, it gets a lot of like uh, radial cracking around the edge of the cap and the cap can be a little bit fatter. I'm not super familiar with, uh, you know, the details when you start to get down into uh, the taxonomy and the subtle differences between these mushroom species. So if in general you're, you're observing these and you're not sure or this feature isn't, you know, really distinct, you can safely uh, identify mushrooms like this as Amanita section Caesarea. If you want to go a little more elaborate, you can call it Amanita section Caesarea. Stirps hemibafa. I don't know what stirps actually means, but there's an Amanita hemibafa. I guess it's from Thailand or, you know, Southeast Asia, but it looks very much like these mushrooms. And um, so I think it's a reference to sort of uh, some of the similarities, but I don't know if they're morphological. Like, I don't know if the hemibafa is just an appearance based thing. Like, that's way, way too specialized knowledge for me. Uh, but the long and short of it is, you know, this is a mushroom that is uh, common and edible. Um, you know, it's very mild in flavor. Uh, some people describe it as mildly like cheesy. You, it's one of the few wild mushrooms also you can eat raw. Uh, so you can slice it up into, you know, little strips or um, I really like the eggs. So you can slice them up and you have this nice little mushroom slice. And, uh, you know, you can dress them with just a little bit of salt and olive oil or whatever you like. And they're quite yummy. I usually don't eat a tremendous amount at a time. So I take it more as a like, you know, mushroomy finger snack. Uh, and as far as, you know, um, I guess specimen collection, this one is just, uh, I mean, I could probably eat it, but it's just sort of dried out. It's a little tired and I'm going to leave it for the bugs. So again, Amanita section Caesarea, uh, common name Caesar mushrooms. You'll hear Caesar mushroom used as a common name, you know, not just in North America, but also over the pond uh, where they actually have the real Amanita Caesarea. Like that's, uh, that's an actual thing. Um, which is, gosh, I'm going to talk about this. I have to talk about this. So uh, I study Roman history and I'm really into the late Roman Republic and the emergence of the, uh, you know, uh, the Caesar dynasty. And, um, you know, uh, the Romans at that time were into all kinds of different wild foods and exotic foods, as you, as you may know. If you've watched Monty Python and, you know, uh, seen John Cleese order some otter's noses, you can understand what I'm talking about. So mushrooms were definitely one of the categories that, uh, you know, um, the Romans were really interested in. And Amanita caesarea, specifically the eggs of it, were really treasured uh, food. And they didn't last very long. Uh, and so there's actually this fun quote of you, you can trust, oh shoot, is, what is it? You can trust a messenger with a message, but don't trust him with mushrooms. Something along those lines that basically talks about, uh, you know, is talking about the um, quick spoiling that can go on when you have wild mushrooms and that it is a uh, important cargo. So um, at any rate, that's where Amanita caesarea gets its name. The uh, Romans also, they had a dish that was specifically for serving wild mushrooms called a boletaria. That's where we get the name bolete from. And so, and boletes, if you're not familiar, is a really large category of mushrooms that have uh, spongy undersurfaces. So, um, you know, again, in um, the sort of the Mediterranean, you have a true Amanita caesarea and these guys, Amanita jacksonii, and its relatives, there are plenty of them, um, but unfortunately, I don't have any messengers to carry this one home with me, so I'm going to leave it for the wildlife. And now you know a little bit more about my educational background. I didn't expect that I would go there, but, uh, you know, ancient history and mushrooms go reasonably well together if you want to keep your brain entertained.